Hi, this is my second time recording it because I fucked up my microphone the first time, which is extra embarrassing because I was in VC with friends while recording the first time, uh, and now that entire take's just kind of gone to waste. But besides that, hi, I'm Ring Around Me, and welcome to my channel where I make things. So I've been playing quite a bit of Lethal Company, a normal amount. I'm coming in. Also, we've run into two turrets already. <laughs> I'm normal about this game, I swear. And for the three of you who don't know what Lethal Company is, it's a comedy horror game meant to be played with your friends. It's best known for its use of proximity chat to both a mix of horrifying and comedic effect. Proximity chat, for those who don't know, just makes it so the farther away you are from other players, the harder it is for them to hear you, and vice versa. Hello? Hello? Hi. And hey, if your friends can hear you, so can the monsters. I've had a lot of fun with it, and I'd say this game is like if GTFO took itself less seriously. Because a lot like GTFO, Lethal Company is the type of game where when you understand the previous fear of the unknown, and by extension, it no longer scares you, it's still good at making you feel vulnerable. And the monsters all have relatively unique interactions. Some react to sound, some to visuals, some to a secret third thing like existing for too long. You know, even the ones who do track you the same way have unique ways of attacking and killing you. So I decided to use my skills as an artist and what little game design knowledge I have to make two new monsters for Lethal Company. I was gonna make three and do less work because this is supposed to be up by Christmas and doing less work is my Christmas present to myself, but it's currently January 23rd, so I don't think that's happening. Also, I was kind of out of ideas as well, so... Yeah, so yeah, maybe there'll be a part two where I do more monsters than that. Now, going into this, I had two goals with each of these monsters. First off, the player encountering them for the first time should either get a quick jump scare, either literally or by misinterpreting how to interact with it and causing it to grow hostile. And second, to have a veteran player encountering the monster to at least have some kind of unique interaction that, even with the fear factor removed, still feels like, you know, fun. The point of games. I feel most Lethal Company entities do this pretty well. The only one I can think of that doesn't is the slime, as the most unique interaction you get from it is luring it away from a door so you can go past it, but I think that's intentional. It's kind of just a big hitbox that hurts you, and, you know, it does a good job at satisfying that niche. I also want them to have aggro triggers that aren't as simple as sight and sound, because as cool as those gimmicks can be, and Lethal Company uses them well, there's only so many ways you can mix and match those until it grows stale. So let's get into the first monster. Stop. This employee is not demonstrating proper protocol, and has put themselves at risk of a shifter attack. A shifter is a creature with an uncanny ability to incorporate non-organic matter into its form, and mimic the appearance of said matter. While naturally peaceful creatures, the shifter is equipped with a powerful stinger that it will use to protect itself if it feels threatened by another entity. The most common cause of a shifter attack towards company employees happens when an employee startles the creature by picking it up. You have encountered a... You have encountered an awoken shifter, do not panic. Simply stay still and the shifter will eventually go on its way. For no reason should you approach an awoken shifter as it may cause it to feel cornered and grow aggressive. An employee may risk an attack in order to subdue the shifter and take its assimilated item. The company advises against this, as it will possibly damage company property, 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 as it will possibly damage you. Rather, it is recommended to present the creature with a low value item in order to commence a trade and meet quota. As long as you follow these protocols, a shifter counter should be considered a low risk, and you are safe to continue your pursuit for scrap to further enrich the company. Thank you for your consideration, and remember, you are a great asset to the company. Presenting this shifter, uh, originally I called it the Mimic, but for multiple purposes we'll get into, I changed that name. But first, let's discuss it from a gameplay and mechanics perspective. You know, how it physically would work in the game. All while the speedpaint goes on in the background, so you can see the pretty art I made. Like the informative tape provided by the company mentioned, it'll mimic the form of any item you can find around the facility and lay there. What this means mechanically is every level has a chance that one of the loot items spawned will be swapped to a shifter, with the maximum amount of possible shifters increasing with the more dangerous the moon is, as well as the more loot items that spawn. They will remain like this unless you pick them up, which as soon as you do, they will enter an awoken state, where they will stand there and hiss at you like, I don't know, some angry cat, or I guess one of those weird Madagascar cockroaches. Here one of three things happens. First off, you stay still and don't panic, where eventually it'll run off a few rooms away and once again enter its item form. Second, for some reason or another, you decide to move either away or towards it, either another monster is chasing you or you just panic and hit W, it will attempt to attack you and then proceed to run off, and the exact same as the first scenario happens from there. In the final scenario, you can drop an item upon which the shifter will swap it for its item currently on its head, and you guessed it, 
run off. This could lead to a scenario where, you know, you and your friend encountered a shifter. Your friend walks off and doesn't know you'd braided with a shifter to change what item it becomes. So now, thinking they already know what item the shifter is and where it's at, they have a chance to encounter it again and possibly face repercussions for it. I know it's kind of a niche situation, but it does happen quite a bit in Lethal Company. And I guess there's a secret fourth option that you somehow try and kill the mimic, upon which it'll just drop its item, no trade required. This isn't recommended as its stinger has quite a bit of range, and while it doesn't do much damage, it has a temporary slowing effect that wears off over time, which potentially will be the difference between outrunning a monster and being run over by a monster. Also, why would you hurt this little guy? Just look at him, he's so little. I was thinking it'd be cute if the item is a noisy item. When he's running away, it makes the noise it would make when you're carrying it as he runs off. It's like the idea of having this interact with other monsters in a sort of sense. Being like a sort of prey that the slime or thumper or possibly even the dogs if it gets outside will chase around and try to eat, meaning there's a benefit to trying to get it to run off away from you if you're trying to get a monster off your tail. And that as long as it's outside of this monster form, other monsters will actively try and hunt it. Lastly, as I mentioned, the original name of this monster was going to be the Mimic, since it's loosely inspired by D&D Mimics. In fact, its main role is to prevent players from beelining to any scrap they see and getting loot and getting the fuck out, causing them at the very least to hesitate before they pick up anything, which was actually the purpose of Mimics originally in D&D. There's a whole video about it made by Pointy Hat, so if D&D history is something that you're interested in, as well as Mimics, and as well as just cool art made by a cool artist, uh, check that out. But despite this inspiration, there's two big reasons I didn't do this name. For one, there's a very popular mod called the Mimic Mod, where rather than mimicking an item, it mimics a fire exit, and I felt that even though I don't know anything about coding, I'm just an artist, if I did ever hire someone to make this a mod, that would make it very confusing. As well as, I know me and my friends whenever we see the masked enemy, we call it the Mimic, and so I don't know if other people do that, but if there are other people who do that, it would just add another layer of confusion for something that's officially in the game. And so the name Shift was born, because I just looked up Mimic synonyms, and that popped up. But now we're done talking about what it does, let's talk about why it looks like this for a second. And you know, talk about the art on this art channel. The design was originally going to be amorphous and slimy, like a weird ditto with an item replacing its head, but then I realized it just didn't look threatening, and a player probably wouldn't realize it could harm them. The whole point of this, you're supposed to stay still until it goes away so you don't get harmed. So I added a very obvious and threatening singer that tells the player, this is a little guy, but he will cut you. Aren't they finally fucking outside plowing snow? As well as having something that's like, you know, a random item from the game, amorphous slime, and a stinger tail makes it feel very like hit bashed together, which I feel a lot of Lethal Company models are, but like in the most positive of a way. Especially the Jester, like god I love the Jester's design. And it really just adds to the muddy aesthetic of that game. And the head was also originally gonna be covered in eyes, as you probably saw during the speed paint, but I'll be honest, uh, that got really annoying to draw. The final thing I have to say about its design is the reason I chose to put the bell item for its head is not only because the yellow goes really nice with the purple and makes the green stinger tail stick out way more, but also I wanted to use as an excuse that if for some reason Zekers is watching this. Can you make it so the bell makes sound when you move around? Like when you move around with it, it makes like ding 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 ding. I think that'd be really cool, and I have no other scenario where it'd be make total sense to say that outside of like maybe Twitter. But I just kind of retweet art of pretty women on Twitter, so I don't think that'd even be a good place to put it. So yeah, that's my suggestion for Lethal Company. <laughs> But that's the shifter. You know, he's a little guy who, but in Minecraft terms, would be a neutral mob. But what if he made something a lot more hostile, as well as a little more... spooky? Employee turnover is a common occurrence at the company. This sometimes, rarely, if ever, is caused by the employee's untimely demise. In the occurrence of an employee passing on, the resulting sorrow of a job unfinished and a quota unmet may cause the employee to rise as a dread from a distance. The dread may seem like any other employee, but upon closer inspection, faculty will notice the dread is indeed no longer human. The dread will wander aimlessly around the facility, unobstructed by physical barriers like doors and walls. As long as you remain in a separate room from the dread, it will simply go on its way. Under no circumstances should you enter a room occupied by a dread, as doing so for too long will cause the dread to become aggressive and attack any employee it can see. Under no circumstances should you remove the body of the dread from the facility, as this will cause it to become prematurely aggressive. Remember, the best way to avoid a dread encounter is to prevent it. So simply, do not die. We hope this informational video helps you to continue to be a valuable asset to the company. Spooky. Presenting the Dread. The Dread was my idea of what of a dead player could control a monster that eventually evolved into what you see here, where a player death causes a monster to spawn. There's already a similar case with the masked enemy where putting the mast on or being killed by a mast turns you into one of them, and while this isn't exactly the same, I definitely took some inspiration from that. While the Dread has a very, very rare chance to spawn naturally, it's more likely to happen as a random chance when a player dies, with the first player dying having a much higher chance to spawn a Dread than subsequent players. And of course, I guess the last player could spawn one, but it's not gonna matter. <laughs> when non-aggro, 
out they will look like any other player but with some kind of visual effect to distinguish them from player i didn't think too hard on this you know just something simple like a broken visor or a particle effect maybe having them float or something you know make it convincing at a glance but not if you stare at it too long kind of like the masked enemy it'll wander slowly around originating from wherever the person died and just kind of wander aimlessly but it will stick to walkable surfaces despite the fact it doesn't need them at the very least in this state it will speaking of not needing walkable surfaces it will just completely ignore gravity walls doors simply walking through them although it will remain inside at all times they remain neutral unless one of two things happen either you enter a room that a dread is in or it enters a room that you are in in that case it will freeze look you in the eye assuming you're looking at it i guess if you're looking away it'll just look at you and enter an animation where it's like writhing in pain or screaming or something like that and if you don't leave by the time this animation finishes it'll become hostile and turn into a new form aka the one i actually drew for the video and have visualized because it was way more interesting than just drawing a lethal company employee with a particle effect it has a little bit of speed as well but can still be outran and it will attack any player in the same room as it that it can see and will come dormant once again either by being left alone for a while or by killing a player and there's no other players in the room it killed them in another way to aggravate the dread though is by removing its body from the facility upon which it'll immediately become aggressive and there's no way to make it go non-aggressive again even bring the body back it'll still just fucking kill you like get fucked idiot <laughs> <laughs> I need to stop improving these. I'm just gonna read this what the script says. I did think of a potential item to add that could, you know, possibly drive it off or keep it from crossing into certain rooms. I was thinking like maybe a salt shaker kind of thing or just like a big package of salt. But that'll make more sense when we talk about its design concept and where that started out. As now that it's a sort of tentacle abomination massive flesh idea it doesn't make as much sense thematically but i still think it would be kind of cool anyways now let's actually talk about the design where that will make more sense i'm sure you saw for probably at least a split second that the original design was going to be a sort of top heavy broad shouldered humanoid kind of thing with really long arms and like a ghost tail and like you know it have the lethal company helmet and you know it had the lethal company helmet you know it had the lethal company helmet as well that had broken glass that resembled teeth i scrapped the design because it was visually too similar to the thumper but i did keep the head and the glass looking like teeth i thought that was still cool and eventually after just fucking around with the design ideas for a bit i got the idea of a more like massive tentacle monsters that was partially inspired by vars mars mars vrs i think that's what it's supposed to be I uh hi this is editing rose I realized that I just completely mispronounced and misread their name. Uh, it's Vars MS. I don't know why I kept thinking of like Vars Mars or Mars Bars or something with Mars. There's no Mars in their name. I'm just... <laughs> I should get checked out for fucking dyslexia because like... There was a lot of errors in the script, but that was probably the most blatant one. Uh, yeah. Anyways, the artist's name is Var MS. Uh... Sometimes MSJ, but like it is, I don't know why I thought there was Mars in the name. Um, so yeah, uh, back to back to the non-editing rows. But they had a really cool design for the scrap monster that lives behind the company building, and I took partial inspiration from that. Also, I feel like tentacle enemy is sorely missing from this game. Like, seeing a bunch of tentacles intertwining as a monster chases you, even if it doesn't scare you, it'll make you feel something. I know what you are. Also, the helmet being cooler colors compared to the rest of the body being this nice, saturated, warm, orangish yellow, and I think red at the tips, just brings a lot of focus to the helmet, where if you pay close attention, you can see a skull shape in the visor. I think it'd be really cool if the closer you got to the monster, the more easily visible the skull behind it became. But, uh, I'll be honest, I don't know how hard that is to program. Like, I'm an artist, not a programmer. That's why this is all concept and nothing more. So if you know shit about programming, let me know how easy that would be, because I have zero clue. I just make funny drawings. Speaking of, that's the last design for day. Uh, I did also want to design an outside environment for a potential new moon, but again, doing less work was supposed to be my Christmas present because I was going to try to get this out by Christmas, but then life happened, you know? Sometimes you just got to go through life, trademark. Maybe I'll save that if I do it for a follow-up video because I really want to make a second one of these. I, as of writing this, have a few more ideas that I'm not going to say here, but I'd also like to take your suggestions. If you have any ideas for what would be, like, a cool monster, what would be a cool new, like, moon environment, like, you know, we have forest, we have a snow environment, we have a desert that's that's kind of about it but yeah leave a comment and if i use your idea i'll make sure to credit you by the way if you do want to try and mod these into the game yourself if you have any coding experience you have my full permission just if you use the actual designs i made or include any of my art make sure to ask me first because i won't hesitate to say yes i just want to know where it's being used when it's being used you know also give proper credit don't do whatever the code equivalent of ss sniper wolf not creating the creators would be i don't know like Putting it, <laughs> putting my credit in the fucking source code or some shit. That'd be funny. I don't know if modding 
unused source code, but that would be really funny. And speaking of my art, like the last video, the line art for this video will be up on my Patreon for free, unless you really want to give me money. And so you can use this as sort of like an adult coloring book. And hey, if you do decide to color your own version of these monsters, show me on Twitter. Like, I don't use that app. As I mentioned, I use it mostly to read the art of pretty women because I'm an art nerd and a simp. But like, I would love to see that shit. It'd be so cool. The last two things I want to say that are technically unrelated to anything Lethal Company. First off, a lot of the music I use in this video is going to be from the game Splatter. Not only should you check out this awesome indie game uh, made by a bunch of cool trans people, but specifically the art was made by a... Let me make sure I'm pronouncing this right. Leaflet on YouTube. They made the art for this game and it sounds really fucking awesome as you've been hearing. Uh, their entire channel is going to be linked below as well as the full OST. And finally, I know some of you who saw that Deep Rock Galactic trailer I made, which was just an edit that got too many views for what it was in all honesty. And that was supposed to come out in January, but then life trademark happened. Uh, so that's going to be delayed. Don't know it's going to be delayed too. I also got way over ambitious with it. And even though I'm trying to pace myself, I'm happy with how it's going. So like, I'm going to keep going at that pace. It's just going to take a bit longer, you know, and it'll be out when it's done, whenever that is. I think that's everything I had to say. I'm considering making the, the shifter into a sticker because he's just a cute little guy and I would love merch of him, but that's also still to be determined. So no promises on that. Anyway, subscribe only if you enjoyed. Know that I appreciate your existence. Please keep on existing. I hope you have a good existence. Bye. Bye hug.